Stand up and sing. Folks are working their way in. Church house is full this morning. Amen. Amen. Number 120. Hey, everyone, get a song book. If you don't know the song, it's Victory in Jesus. Amen. Let's all help us all sing. Everyone sing out now. Amen. On the first. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Sing now! This morning, amen. On the last, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Glory to God, that's good singing this morning. Woo, hallelujah, I'm glad I'm here. Glad you're here. I'm glad the Lord's here, amen. Boy, we're gonna have time today. I can tell you right now, we've already had a great time in Sunday school, good time in the Lord, getting ready to uh, launch out into the deep here this morning. Hope you're ready, and come, brethren, come to worship the Lord. It sure is good to see all of you here. If you're visiting with us this morning, God bless you, make yourself at home. Uh, a lot of special things to talk about today, and uh, it's get, it's a very exciting time. Middle of September. Uh, that means camp meetings right around the corner, and uh, things are a lot of good things planned. Now, our baptismal service will be next Sunday night. It has folks that were just wasn't sure or ready for today. So next Sunday evening, six o'clock. If you have been saved in that order, you get saved first, then baptized. 
sometimes people make a profession when they're young and get back and they don't really sure but when you really get saved you get baptized after that so if you've been saved but have not been baptized be sure and get on this list uh, today I want you to get on the list today so we'll know uh, how, what we're dealing with and how many we got for next Sunday night now the following Sunday will be our big join the church Sunday and so you that have not yet become members we're going to talk about that in a little bit uh, uh, plan on joining church on that Sunday the two weeks from this morning uh, now there's also another sheet down here we're taking a sign up for our trip to Rockingham now uh, this is a pretty good long trip but we only do it about two times a year this far so you know them kids go to ball games it's two hours away all the time and people don't think nothing about it so Friday the 27th that's one week from this Friday we'll be taking the big bus Lord willing and going to Rockingham Revival I'll be preaching three nights and everybody's coming on Friday night the folks from uh, Midview and Kings Mountain are coming going to be a big camp reunion y'all and uh, so that'll be one week from Friday the bus will be going down the driveway at, at 3 30 now that means kids might have to get out of school a few minutes early that's wonderful they get they leave school early for ball games and so don't 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 nobody start that stuff about oh that's too hard on a kid whatever uh listen that's good for them that's good for them that's good for them and what what they're gonna get down there that night is a, is more important than any ball game in the world and it, it's uh it's gonna be good so everybody plan on going with us that day the 27th uh leaving here at 3 30 if you're gonna drive that's fine you can leave here a little bit later and drive but to uh, uh, Charlotte traffic it's Friday evening so you have to factor that in probably a 30 or 40 minutes drag time there and uh, no pun intended but I guess that's right uh, uh, but that's right <laughs> uh, anyway uh, we're excited about it looking for a great time in the Lord well thank you for praying for me been an old-fashioned jubilee this weekend up in Virginia and I got home about I don't know, I went 12 o'clock this morning. That was early compared to last Sunday morning. And so I feel good in my soul, and I'm happy today. I'm happy to be saved. I'm rejoicing in the Lord, heaven bound with a hammer down, brother. Amen. Ain't no looking back. Ain't no turning back. We got something way better in this world waiting on us over on the other side. Amen. Woo! And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. So let's enjoy the Lord today to get a blessing. Forget your troubles. Forget your bills. Sitting there worrying about them ain't going to pay them no way. And just get a get a blessing. Get refreshed in the Lord today. How about that? Camp meeting's October 16th. And uh, put that down. Plan that whole weekend. We'll have food Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And church every morning, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. Church every night, Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, Barry Spears, Frankie Hunt, Cody Zorn, uh, uh, the, the Edwards family, all our preacher friends are coming. I mean, just we want everybody up here like firing off a, a machine gun spiritually, spiritually. And uh, so uh, we're excited about that and looking for a great time. Amen. All right, let's have church this morning, y'all. Let's enjoy the Lord. We're going to have a quick time of fellowship. Then the choir comes. Let's all stand. Do that right now. Everybody standing. Everybody fellowship. Be friendly with each other.
Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's enough of us. We ought to make some kind of racket. Do that? This morning. Amen. Just pray. Go ahead. Amen. Be with us today. Every morning when I wake up to see the sun. Someday I'll reign with them forevermore. Everybody. And I got much more than I asked for. This sweet peace and joy I've never had before. I've got a mansion waiting for me on the other shore. I've got much more Everybody. than I asked for. Everybody. And I've got much more. Peace and joy I've never had before. 
Lord of God, oh, they crammed a lot of people in here this morning. Lord of mercy. Amen. If all y'all come to camp meeting, ain't going to be nowhere for the visitors. That's their problem. Amen. <laughs> all right. Let's everybody get ready to give now and honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. I got much more than I asked for. And way more than I deserve. Let's all give this morning. I hope that you will. Uh, remember, I, I preached on tithing a couple weeks ago, and and uh, people, I had some good comments about it actually. And you, uh, people got it all wrong. The church you just wants your money. All that. People are ignorant who talk like that. They, they don't even understand. They know not whereof they speak, nor whereof they affirm. Uh, giving is an honor. It's a privilege. I, I do. I got mine right here, and, and an offering also. And so I, it's, it's an honor to be able to give to the work of the Lord. So let's do that this morning and honor God with our tithes, our offering. And if you need to get caught up, do it right. If you do it right, he'll help you. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing, the good fellowship, the good spirit we feel in here this morning. Thank you for the, the, the light that we have in here this morning. Lord, it just uh, you just feel your spirit and your power. And Lord, it's just like uh, there's a happy atmosphere in here this morning. And I pray for all those out there in the world that don't know this. Lord, they don't have nothing but darkness and heaviness and woe and sorrow and, and guilt and fear and dread. God, please, Lord, help us to reach them and bring them in. They can see the light and feel your spirit. And I pray for those that are sick this morning, especially our sister, Miss Lisa, over there, Lord. Touch her, God, and, and give her peace in her heart, Lord, and their family and others that need our prayers today. Oh, God, uh, those little babies that we've been praying for, Lord, bless them. I pray for our country this morning. God, that you'd give, give our leaders enough sense to do the right thing or move them out. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, God, Lord, in these dark days to let our light shine before men that others may see our good works and glorify you. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering this morning. I pray you'd multiply it and use it for your glory. And We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, don't miss service tonight. Come back and bring somebody with you. Got some real good stuff planned. Uh, you don't want to miss. This This is a Sunday night place to be right here, y'all. Uh, it, it's been great lately. And uh, thank thank you for being here. Well, I hope everybody will you make room for everybody. We, we have a mob of kids back there in the junior church. And uh, it's about full in here this morning. And uh, so be respectful of other people and their toes. <laughs> Don't step on them. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's have a good time in the Lord. Now, uh, don't forget now, Wednesday night, bring somebody with you. Be here Saturday morning, going visiting. 
Uh, Saturday evening, I, I got to preach a special little jubilee service down in Salisbury uh, at um, the Samaritan Baptist Church, and the Sons of Thunder is going to be preaching off somewhere up toward Lenore or on the other side of the mountain, somewhere or somewhere up there. So pray for them Saturday night, but we're going visiting Saturday day. And so uh, Saturday morning, 930, put that down, okay? All right. Uh, I, I woke, thought about this song on the way down here this morning, and I want to say, you let this song be personal just to you, okay? Go ahead. Praise God. You enjoyed that? Say amen. amen. Boy, I've been, seemed like the Lord's been extra special good to me this week. You ever felt like that? Just special blessings been coming my way. And, and it's not something you can put your hands on or touch. Just in my heart, in my heart, the Lord's just been blessing me lately. And giving me answers to prayer and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in this world. Nothing in this world. Nothing in this world's worth what we have in our hearts this morning. Take your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2. We'll look at some thoughts here about the uh, um, early church and some things God said about it. And then I'll bring you the message. Acts chapter number 2. And we'll look, if you would please, at verse number 44. Acts chapter 2 and verse 44. All right, we're settled down now. That's right, stay down. Good. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. 
And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. You'll never hear that preached on a TV preacher. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I got in on that number one time. When, turn this off. Uh, when the Lord saved me. I'm going to preach this morning on the subject why I am a member of the church. Why I'm a member of the church. Not long after I got saved, uh, it was brought up. They said, now you boys are saved now. And we got baptized. They said, you need to join the church. And I'll never forget that. I remember thinking, whoa, I'm going to be a church member. I'm going to be a member of Nebo Baptist Church. It thrilled my heart. I thought, what do you got to do? They said, well, you're saved, right? Yep. You're baptized, right? Yep. And they said, join the church. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. They said, just what you're supposed to do, and I did it. And, uh, uh, and I'm glad I did. It was the right thing to do. I'm going to talk about church membership a little bit this morning. And uh, I'm going to say why I am a member of Shining Light Baptist Church. My goal is not just to have a bunch of members. My goal is to get people united and working for God and become a part of and support of a Bible-believing, New Testament, Bible-believing Baptist church. Uh, I, I understand this morning that some of the crookedest, meanest, uh, nuts and crooks and rotten devils in the world belong to a church. So I am not insinuating at all that church membership makes you more saved or even saved at all or even more right with God. Don't. It don't. Writing your name down in a church roll book don't, don't make you more of a Christian. That's got nothing to do with it, actually. I mean, I know these people, these, these people belong to churches as crooked as a dog's hind leg. If they fell in a barrel of fish hooks, they wouldn't get stuck all the way down to the bottom. Uh, that, listen, they screw their socks on in the morning. Uh, the politicians are, are church members, most of them. Claim they are. I mean, come on. I, I, it, don't, it don't mean you're right with God. But I tell you what, it's morning, if you are right with God and you do want to serve God, you will want to unite yourself and become a part of a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. I think it is very, very, very important. Now, there are a lot of people today that say, why do you even have a church membership? I don't know why you have one. Uh, uh, don't ain't, ain't we just free to come and go and come and go? Uh, yeah, but you're not thinking. You're not thinking. You're not thinking. Let, think for a second. Uh, the reason you have church membership is because uh, uh, in the Bible they didn't have they did not have uh, church buildings like this. And there's nuts that preach against having uh, buildings like this because they are nuts. And uh, it's hard to get this many people in your living room unless you got an uh, Elon uh, LeBron house or some. Uh, all you people can't come and sit in my living room. And uh, it, it, it's impossible. And so you build a building so the church can meet in it. Now, when you build a building and church can meet in it, obviously somebody got to pay for it. And, and there's building property and responsibility and stuff. So you form a body of believers that the Lord has already done spiritually and we do it uh, physically and have what we call a church. Now, and so they're, they're buying and sell property. I personally, I do not have my name on anything in this church. I don't own one thing in here. I have a few things in my office is mine. Uh, that guitar right there is mine. Uh, but I don't own any. I don't own these pews. I don't. Own, people, people's crazy. People think, oh, the preacher owns the church. He gets all the money. That's that's a, that's the dumbest thing. I am a member just like you are. I have when we vote on something. I have one vote just like you do. And uh, and a church, we, we follow the Lord. We try to follow the Bible. And we we own property. And we own buildings. And we have a pay 
bills. We have to pay electric bill. We have to do all this stuff. Do it. So to do that, obviously, you got to have some type of organization. And I don't like it, but you got to do that. You have to do that. And so when you do that, you have a church membership so that uh, you know if he's if he's if he's four or five hundred people here, uh, you can't have a thousand hell's angels come in here and outvote you. Does that make sense? And that could happen in some places. So, we have church membership. What I'd like to do to you today is show you why. Uh, now, got people in jail are church members. I, I like what Jack Howell said that time. They, they evangelized the whole, about the whole city of Chicago. And he went in there. He went to preach one morning. And he went in there and he said, uh, this is Reverend Howell. Right? He looked at him and, and uh, they looked at him and said, uh, hey, preacher, we're all members of your church. <laughs> and and that's, probably, that's probably true. I, I seen a guy one time. And I got talking to him, and he's he's drunk. He's so drunk he couldn't hardly stand up. He said, "Hey, Danny, you remember me?" I, I said, "No, I don't think I do." He said, "You saved me one time." <laughs> I, said, I thought you looked like one I saved. Uh, I, I, said, I said, "If you let the Lord, he'd probably done a better job than I did." Uh, but uh, that don't that that being belong to a church don't make you a Christian. Uh, like going to you know sitting in a garage don't make you a car. Uh, a, a man sitting in a bakery don't make you look like a uh, make you look like one, but don't make you a donut. And uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you, listen, today, listen. I'm talking about church membership. Why I am a member of the church, and you ought, you know what you ought to do if you're saved and living right. You you ought to join this church or go find one better than join it. That's what you ought to do. That's what you ought to do. He say, well, there's things wrong. Absolutely. There's things wrong with every church. Every church. And I mean everyone. And wouldn't you feel awful uncomfortable if you found a perfect church? There'd be nobody in there for you to fellowship with because you're a sinner. If, if you found a perfect church, don't join it because it wouldn't be perfect no more. I'm glad that we can get in here. We're fellow believers. We have our flaws. We have our faults. We have our, our shortcomings. But we're all a part of the body of Christ, a shining light Baptist church, a local, physical, visible, local church. Everybody in the world who's saved is a part of the body of Christ. Is a part of the body of Christ in the world, universally. Everybody who belongs to a church like this is a part of an individual, local, Bible-believing Baptist preaching church. That's right. And if you're part of this church, that's what you are. Number one, I'll run these off to you right quick. You know why I'm a member of the church? Because I got acquainted with a founder. The night I got saved, I met personally the Lord Jesus Christ. I met him. I did not see him with these eyes, but that night at Nebo Baptist Church, I got acquainted with the founder of the church. You know the founder of the church is? Jesus. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. But I'm glad to be a part of a long, long succession of Christians that goes all the way back to the days of the apostles when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached to saith the Lord and thousands were saved and then the old, the old uh, New Testament church fathers and then down through the dark ages when they were forced underground and imprisoned and beat and then during the times of the Reformation and the Baptists that stayed straight all along through that time and then they come out and they preached the great revivals and then all the days of D.L. Moody and Charles Spurgeon and John Wesley and the great revivals of Cumberland Valley up through the mountains of, of, uh, of uh, North Carolina and Tennessee and Virginia and up, in, up into the New England and all those great... I'm glad that I got to be a part of the same group that they were a part of. I'm glad that I got to join a local Bible believing church and say that's my church. I'm proud I'm, I'm a member there. I ain't much but I'm a part of that church. Shining Light Baptist Church is my church. That's where I want to be. That's where, I, that's where I get my food. That's where I get my help. That's where my friends pray for me. That's why I got acquainted with the founder and I want to be a part of it. That's right. That's right. That's what Zacchaeus did when he met him in Luke 19. That's what Simon Peter did when he met him in Luke or, deal with him in Matthew 16. That's what Paul did when he met him on the road to Damascus. I don't just know about him. I know him. I know him. Amen. I got acquainted with the founder. Number two, I needed a church home. I needed a church home. Uh, no church is all that it should be. There ain't no such thing as a church without flaws. And the more people you got, 
the more flaws you got. If you want a place where there's no problems, I'll tell you where to find it. Go where there ain't no people. But you are one, so you're taking one with you. So there's no such place on this earth where there's not problems, people. No such a thing. More people, more problem. More people, more problem. So get used to it. But I needed a church home. Amen? That's right. I needed a church home. I was homeless, like a homeless person, until I became a part spiritually. I now have a, a, a family. I have the family of God. I remember when I first got saved, that song come out and they said, uh, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Some of y'all don't know that song. Uh, but I remember thinking, I'm a part of the family of God. Little Danny got to be a part of the family of God. Woo! Hallelujah. What about that? I'd run all over Nebo all my life. and people, people, Some people liked me and some people didn't like me. And, and uh, some of my kin folks, they didn't want their kids to play them. They thought I was a bad influence on them. And because uh, uh, I played rock music. And I played in a band. And they said, I want you run around that Danny. He's, he's a bad influence. He plays that loud music. We played in a, a band one time at school when I was about, uh, I was about eighth grade, ninth grade, something like that. And we played in the auditorium. And my aunt was there. And, and she held her ears and run out the door. And I thought, Glory to God, brother. I felt like we Mick Jagger or somebody. And I thought, well, that was a, good, that was a good, good response. And you know something? I looked back at that and I thought, I got saved. I got saved. And then I got in church. Then they didn't like me because I went overboard. Said, Which way y'all want me? You didn't like me when I was sinning? I've always been that type of person. I ain't just going to sit and watch the sun set. I never have been a type of person that I just say, well, over there, some, over there, some. I'll sit here in the middle and do nothing. I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Amen? I mean, if we're going to play, let's play, bless God. If we're going to preach, I'm going to preach. If we're, if if we're going to do it, let's do it hard. Let's do it right. Let's push it all away. Amen? I mean, take it to the limit. Worship God. Give everything to Jesus. Have way Lord I needed a church home and I got one I got one now men every person in the world has a built in mechanism inside you to want to belong and to be a part of a group that's why we were talking about dead jeep week in Gatlinburg a couple weeks ago. And I, didn't, I ain't going over on Jeep. I was there one time. It was an accident. I'm telling you, brother, they Jeeps lined up from here to Cracker Barrel up yonder. And, and you can't... I, 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 and that's fine. Look, I think Jeeps are cool. I, I, don't, I don't have one, but I think... I like possum there. So Jim drives that, and it looks like a lemon sitting right up there in the parking lot. I think there's other people in here got Jeep. I like Jeeps. Ain't nothing wrong with having a Jeep. But look, their, their whole identity... Is I've got a Jeep. I mean, that's not, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I, I got a forerunner. Uh, I mean, nothing wrong with having a Jeep. I think Jeeps are cool. I really like them. It's got them lights on them, you know. Got lights on the wheel, and they look like a the Batmobile or something coming down the street, lights shining. I, I think that's cool. Uh, but, you know, people want to belong. I'm in the Jeep club. Yes, sir, buddy. I'm one of us. Uh, you know, everybody wants to belong. They want to be in the... Uh, Kiwanis Club, or want to be in the moose, or the goose, or the elks, or the rabbits, or, or something. Oh, oh, we ladies, we meet and have Tupperware. I don't even know if there is Tupperware anymore. They still have such a thing. I, I, want, I want to be a part of this group. Well, it's natural. It's natural. Remember, I want to be on this team. Uh, my kids play in sports. I want, well, a group of us men, we have a fishing club. We have a hunting club. We rent, we lease land, and we go hunt. Nothing wrong with that. And let me tell you something. Thing, same thing's true spiritually. There's something in you that wants to be connected to a group. We're all like that. We're a family, y'all. We're a big family. You're, there's safety in having a family. Some of the saddest people in the world is have no family. No family. No family. I've had people tell me, they said, Brother Danny, my mama's dead. My daddy's dead. All my aunts and uncles are dead. And they, my family lives up north, and I don't ever see them. But thank God I got a church family. And a lot of times, you, you, you check me on this, a lot of times we're more at home and more relaxed and more comfortable and get more help from our church family than we do our literal physical family uh, that, that don't have nothing to do with us. Amen? I'm glad I needed a church family. There's something special 
feel about being a part of a church family, y'all. I mean, when somebody's sick, when somebody's sick, I've heard had people say, Brother Danny, it was such a blessing. I was sick last week, and two or three of the ladies from the church called me. And it was so encouraging. And so-and-so come by and seen me. Or one of the men come and prayed for me. Or what, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I needed that. I need that. I need to be a part of something. It, it, it really it helps you stay in line. It helps you stay in line. It encourages you to stay straight. Because you think, I'm a part of that now. i got a responsibility. I'm a church member. I'm representing Jesus. I'm representing Shine Light Baptist Church. It helps you stay straight and live better. The, uh, it, it, you have a love for the family. That's right, brother. I have. Uh, you have a love for the family. When people need help, we do it all the time. Somebody come run up and they'll say, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, so-and-so can't pay their light bill. And we'll, we'll take, you know, a hundred dollars or something, slip it to them and, and help them out. That's, that's what a family does. That's what we look out after each other. We care about each other. Now, me and my family, my girl, uh, my daughters, my, my wife, my kids, my, all of us, uh, we can bicker back and forth a little bit. We can bicker back and forth, and I'll fuss at them, or they'll fuss at me. Daddy, I'll talk about Daddy, you need to go like, Daddy, you need to go. And if one more person, you listen to me, if one more person says, Daddy, you know what's coming, don't you? If one more person comes up to me and says, Danny, you're not as young. Oh, shut up, will you? <laughs> Some of y'all had to hobble in here this morning. The next person says that. I, 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 like that. I said, Danny, you're young. You know, when I hurt my shoulder, I was 17. Was that too old? I'm, I'm just messing with you. That is the truth, really. That you, you still get hurt when you're old, but it takes a lot longer to get better. I found that out. Well, I get better in two days, a long time ago. Now, it's weeks, months, but well, never. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, listen, y'all, we're a family. We're a family. So we can bicker back and forth with each other a little bit. I'll tell you one thing. If I'm out in public and somebody says something about one of my kids, I'm going to go, we're going to have an argument. Amen. I'm going to stand up for my family. I stand up for my family. And I was like, listen, buddy, I told you that story before years ago. Carrie sitting over there, she was... I don't know how old she was, 18, 17 or 18, maybe 20. And sitting in the doctor's office there in Marin. And she went to the doctor one time. And she's uh, sitting in the doctor. These old ladies in there, they're talking awful about me. That Danny Castle, I'll, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't walk across the street here. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And she sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there. And finally, she stood up and said, uh, you know, I'm his daughter. And she said, they said, is that right? Well, you know, we've been talking about coming up here and visiting sometime. Oh, you bunch of old hag hypocrites. Uh, listen, I, I, that's right, brother. I, I, you remember the doc's office right beside the church there? And uh, that's where that, I've been thinking, isn't that wonderful? You know, blah, blah, blah. You know what? She said, you ain't going to say here and talk about my dad like that. And I've done the same thing if they're talking about one of them. I said, whoa, 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 right here. Hey, listen, what they're saying might be true, but they ain't going to say it without me saying something. And we're like that with the church. We're like that with the church. People say, oh, yeah, that's how I, 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 whatever. I had somebody say something one time, called me and said, so and so blown your church? And I said, you sure does. And they said, well, you ought to hear how he talks at work. You ought to hear how he cusses, he does this, that. And I was like, oh, none of your bed, just shut up, leave him alone. Let, he, he's a member of our church. Don't you worry about it. How about that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We take up for each other. We're protective. You're protective over your family and protected over those who love. I'm not. I'm, I, it may, you want to make me mad? You start talking bad about Shining Light Baptist Church. But I put my heart and soul into this thing for 24 years. And I've done my dead level best to get the job done for God like we're trying to do. And you just keep your dirty, slimy mouth off of this church. You ain't got something good to say? Shut up. Amen. Most people like that are backslidden. They ain't doing nothing for God no way. Amen. I'm glad for the church family. I'll tell you something else. The church helps me. The church helps me. Buddy, when I'm having a hard time, people come. I've had people call me. Brother Danny, uh, I, I, one time, been a few years ago, I'd, I'd go somewhere and I'd go somewhere else. I was gone like two or three weeks in the middle of summer. It raining all the time. Grass growing that much every month, every, every week. I couldn't. And one day, one day, all of a sudden, a truck pulled up in the yard and it was Jeremy and Michelle. Remember that? 
and, and they, I don't, I don't even know if I was there, I think I was there, and they come and mowed my grass. And they said, Brother Danny, we know you had, was going to be gone, and we wanted to help you out a little bit. They don't know what that meant to me. I mow my own grass. I still mow my own grass. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Man, if you're able, you ought to do it. And you got the time, you can. But I was gone a lot and couldn't. And they did that. Stuff like that right there. I had people say, Brother Danny, I was so sick I couldn't stand it. And so and so got together and they brought a meal over to my house. The church helps me. The church. If you'll be involved and get a part where well, you say, well, I'm sick and nobody, well, maybe they didn't even know it. Maybe get involved. Get involved. Be a, jump in head over heels. Be a part of everything that goes on. Be a part of prayer meeting. Be a part of camp meeting. Be a part of youth rally. Be a part of everything. Get in it, brother. And when your time comes, the church will help you. It'll give you good godly advice. You're about ready to make a decision. Buying a house. Getting married. Going to college. All those big decisions. And getting married is like 50,000 times more important than them other ones. You can buy a house and sell it. Don't get that idea. Uh, you, 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 can, you can go to college and quit. But son, once you say I do, you've done it. And you're, you're going to deal with that for the rest of your life one way or the other. And you, got, you want advice like that? I'm glad you can get it at church. I have people call me. I'm not asking for this. i got plenty to do. But I have people call me and say, Brother Danny, I'm thinking about taking another job. Would you help me pray about it? Yes, sir, I sure will. That's what I did to my pastor. Before I started this church, I called my pastor, Hall Hollifield, down in South Carolina. I said, Preacher, I feel like the Lord's dealing with me about starting a church. And he said, Well, uh, you feel like God's in? I said, Yeah. He said, You got some people who will help you? I said, Yeah. And he said, Go for it. And uh, he basically gave me advice. I'm glad. That's why I'm a member of the church because you come up against decisions, buying a house, getting married, uh, taking a big a new job in which you need advice for. That don't mean the preacher knows everything. That doesn't mean he'll say, sometimes I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you I'll pray about it with you. I'll help you pray about it and, and give you the best. Now, sometimes if I can give you advice, say, I, I think it's a bad idea. Uh, but uh, most time I don't do that. Most time I just say, I'll pray. You do what God wants you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the church Helps me. Not only that. Number four. Being a church member gives me the opportunity to serve. Do you realize what an opportunity to serve you can have at church? People say, I just want to do something for the Lord. You can do something. And I've, I've had, had people tell me, they said, uh, well, the church is too big, preacher. I, like, I want to go to a little church where I can do something. Listen, there's more opportunities in a big church to do something than they are a little church. I'm not against little churches. There's, there's plenty to do. Plenty to do. And a lot of, sometimes people come up and they'll say, Brother Danny, I want to do something. Uh, uh, the other day, Jessica, raise your hand over there, Jessica. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> that Jessica. Hey, Amen. She worked for the tag office over there in Mar uh, Morgan. You don't work there no more, right? Uh, but anyway, she came up to me the other day, and I tried out to preaching about the bus ministry, and she said, Brother Danny, I want to get my bus license and drive a bus. I said, glory to God, sister. I text Susan. She sent me the next time. She's going to take the bus class. And I said, praise God. Need two or three more to do that sometime in October, ain't it? And, uh, and we'll pay for it. And you know what? She's going to get a bus license to help us drive buses. Listen to me. Listen, let me show you how this thing works. You come in here on Sunday morning and you just see all this. You see the choir. That's not just an accident. It didn't, didn't just happen. Late last night... People were praying. All day yesterday, bus workers were out visiting. All week, I've been praying and mulling this over in my mind and in my heart. All week long, people have worked and phone call and invited. 6.30 this morning, alarm clock started going off. Bus work, I, I got in late. Man, I went out like a light. And I woke up in the middle of the night and went back to sleep. And at, at uh, 7, I don't know, a little after 7 this morning, I woke up. Kelly was already downstairs dressed. Frankie come up there. It, was, it wasn't even 7.30. He come up there and done had his church clothes on while you was snoring. And Spencer did it. And Ethan did it. And Miss Sandy did it. And the bus workers did it. And then somebody gave money. To put them tires on that bus. And somebody laid underneath them and worked. And somebody else gave money and put diesel fuel in them buses.
And then a Sunday school teacher or a junior church worker prayed and prepared and prayed and prepared. Them boys, Spencer and DJ, drove all day yesterday from uh, Ohio where they were, come to the meeting last night, preached in Virginia uh, before I did, and then came back, got up this morning, drove the bus, you got up, you came in here this morning, and listen, some little bus kid sat back there this morning and sat in a Sunday school class and heard the greatest story ever ever told and listen I'm telling you that don't just happen it's everybody pitching in and making that possible it's all you folks that give week after week after week that makes it possible it's all you folks that faithfully pray for the church that a Sunday school teacher can say you realize how important Sunday school is every kid in the world needs to be in Sunday school and listen to a Sunday school teacher teach the Bible listen there's millions of people that got saved because of Sunday school if you didn't have a church you couldn't have that what if we all just said well there were no no church buildings in the New Testament there was no church buses in the New Testament well, there wasn't no internet neither, you hypocrite. Get off of YouTube. You practice what you preach, hypocrite. I'm talking to all you preachers that preach against church buildings. You're an idiot. There ain't no scripture to have a YouTube channel. Or air condition. Or a car. You're lazy. You're lazy. That's what your problem is. You're just lazy. Amen, Brother Danny. Let it rip. That's right. Brother, we don't worship this building. This building means nothing. There ain't no different than that sheetrock. There are sheetrock in the pool hall. But I tell you what, this place is set apart for the God, for the Lord, the Bible, the preaching of the Word of God. We come here together and meet together, and God does things in people's hearts. That's why I go to church. That's why I'm a church. It, it gives me an opportunity to serve. It gives me an opportunity to serve. I want to be a servant in the church. I want a job. I want a job. I remember old Larry Brown saying, when he first got saved, he went to his pastor and said, Preacher, I want a job. He didn't know nothing. Give me a job. And the preacher said, Well, tell you what I'm going to do, Larry. He said, I'm going to put you in charge of the steeple inspection committee. He said, What's that? Well, every once in a while, you look at the steeple. And when he's painting, let us know. He said, okay, brother. He said, every service I came to, I stood there and looked up at that steeple. He said, I was, thought I was doing, I'm doing something in the church. Glory to God, I got a job. I got a job. You know, there's a job for everybody in here at the church. He said, well, steeple inspection committee, what a dumb. Yeah, but he, I believe the Lord will reward him for every time he looked up there at that steeple. Yeah, yeah, that's the way this thing works, brother. You give a cup of cold water. Miss Desi, bless her heart, Goldfinger, sitting right there. She has me a glass of cold water sitting here on the pulpit every Sunday. Sunday you, don't, you don't see her up here, do you? I don't know how she does that. She gets invisible. She sneaks in here in the middle of the night. I don't know. Somehow or another, she gets a glass of water right here on this pulpit. And, and it's, I, don't, I don't always drink it until I get through. But you know what? The Lord looks down and says, oh, boy. She not only has gold fingers, she can walk up there and put a glass of water for the preacher. Everybody has a part. I'm going to say this, i gotta be, I got to quit. It gives me the chance to invest in God's work. Place to put my money. Like it or not, God has always had a place for people to gather and put their money together and disperse it. That's right. That's why your tithes and your offering... Go and belong to your church. Not to a missionary, not to a needy family down the road. If every one of us had that attitude, if everybody in here said, I know some people down the road need help, I'm going to give them my tithes this week. If everybody did that, we'd have to shut the lights off, close the doors, and we couldn't have church. I couldn't afford this by myself. So you see what I'm saying? We put it together, and then somebody says, a family down there needs help, and then the church helps that family. A church supports the missionaries. All the missionaries would have to come home if churches didn't exist and support them guys and send them money every month. It gives me a chance to invest. Now, what I gave this morning, I gave my tithes and offering. That right there by itself ain't going to pay this light bill. But I tell you what, everybody doing their part put together can, glory to God. And the church would never have to have a yard sale and beg for money and anything like that if everybody in the church give what they're supposed to give. That's why we don't do that. I mean, sometimes if young people want to 
have a fundraiser or something, that's up to them. But our church ain't selling donuts to the sinners to help us pay God's bills. Brother, we give our tithes and our offering. That's always been God's uh, plan for, uh, for financing a church. People giving out of their heart, out of their pocket. That's always been that way. Always been that way. Give me a chance to invest in the Lord's work. I'm glad to know that my little part that I give on Sunday makes the camp meeting happen. That's a blessing. I'd pay for a meal. I'd put some chicken on the table back there for a bunch of preachers that's struggling and fighting a battle and discouraged. That's why I'm a member of the church. Last thing I'll say this I'm through. The church is the only institution, it's an organism, not just an institution, that Jesus acknowledges as his very own and he's coming back after. Jesus is not, that's why, that's why you got to be, I'm a little bit, a lot, leery of organizations that are religious but are not connected with the church. Like Gideon's stuff. I, I think Gideon's done a fine work in the past and most Gideon's are members of a good church. That's fine. I'm not against the Gideon's. They put out a lot of Bible. But there's some groups like that that are, that say, well, we're not affiliated with any church. That's so you can get money from people that disagree with them people. Or don't even call it a church. There's groups popping up everywhere now don't even say the word church. And Jesus died for the church, people. Jesus died for the church. On this rock I'll build my church. And he's coming back after the church. Don't be ashamed to be identified with that word church. Don't be ashamed of that. Not the Moose Club. The Elks. Well, they do a lot of good. The Masons. You know, whatever. You don't, look, you don't want to belong to nothing that you have to keep secrets in. In the Masonic Lodge, it's known to be secrets. You, are you listening to me? I ain't trying to be ugly. I don't even know if there's anybody in here that is a Mason. But you don't belong to stuff you have to keep secrets in. Jesus said, in secret, I've done nothing. If it ain't wrong, you don't have to hide it. We don't have, we don't have secrets here. The lights are on. It's bright. Uh, you know, we, we know who's here, who ain't here. We know where the money goes. We know it. Nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. That's why I'm a member of the church. There's nothing like the church. I tell you, I can't tell you the times that I've been weary. Oh, girl, get a song. I can't tell you the times that I've been just defeated, and hurt, and tore all to pieces. One time, I was going through a really, really, really bad time. I was driving down the road crying because my heart was broke. And it was about this time of year. And I used to go up there to Carl Lackey's at Mount Airy, their Jubilee, every year. They had it in the gymnasium. There'd be six, seven hundred people in there. And that's when they used to have Dr. Ruckman and people like that in there. And I remember going up the road one day, and I'll never forget this day. I thought, if I can just make it to that camp meeting, if I can just make it to that camp meeting, and I did. And I walked in there. And they had old Larry, what's his name, the world pop, most famous banjo picker. And they got up there and they started playing some old hillbilly song. People started singing, I'll fly away. And it's just like it just made me feel like a million times better. Just being with God's people. Listen, you get that at church that you can't get nowhere else in this world. I've had people tell me a hundred times, Brother Danny, I felt bad and I almost didn't come today, but I'm so glad I did. I feel so much better. You know why I'm a member of the church? It's the only thing in this world Jesus died for and He's coming back after. I'm honored to be a member of the church. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for being good to us. I pray now, Lord, that you bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Increase it in power. Increase it in holiness, increase it in membership, increase it in offering, increase it in witnessing. Lord, help us to be just what you want us to be down here in this old world in 2024. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. They're singing this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I can't join the church. I, I ain't even right with God. You want to get right with God? Good time to do it. Hey man, hey man, let's just sing and rejoice a little bit. I'm glad I'm a part of the church. Hey man, yeah, you want to come and pray? Come on, just get around this altar and say, Lord, I want to get in. I want to get in. That's right.
Ain't nothing in the world like being saved and serving the Lord. Nothing in this world like it. Nothing can compare. Don't you feel like you just had a bath? You know, that's what you feel. You just got cleaned up and your heart stirred up. Got your eyes back on Jesus. That's the way it feels. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to go. Be back this evening at 6 o'clock. Men, prayer meeting about 10 minutes till. Uh, be here. We're going to pray for the service. If you are not signed up, get on the Rockingham list and or baptism list. You're going to get baptized next Sunday night. Get on the list. Two weeks a day. Everybody's ready to join the church? Let me know. If you're saved and living right, best you can, and been baptized, be ready to join the church two weeks from today, okay? All right, we're going to be dismissed. Good to have Brother Blake and the Spice.